Hey guys, so I got an interesting question from one of the viewers of the channel. It was asking, how do you get away from symmetrizing everything and using mirror modifiers? Because it can become kind of boring when you're working on hard surface objects and whatnot. So let's go ahead and play around with this idea of just creating kind of hard surface object here real quick. You can actually utilize symmetry still. It's not really a big problem. But it's better if you maybe turn the mirror modifiers off or don't symmetrize. And instead, just go for making unique edits or cuts using uh, booleans on different sides of the object. So this is going to come back down to the art fundamentals, though. So if you're really struggling with this, I'd recommend just doing some shape exploration and then doing some form exploration, something similar to what we're doing here, where you try to figure out how to make things look good and balanced on an abstract level, not even worrying about making, you know, like a serious project or nothing. But what you can see here happening is that we can just start working away at a symmetrical base, which starts to turn it into an asymmetrical piece, right? We can cut it at different ratios and rates and start making it look more or less interesting, perhaps. All right, so it's not really a big deal, but for some of you guys, um, it, it can be kind of, right? Because it's, it's like a little, little rules to this. And those rules, you know, it's like doing math. If you're going to try to do algebra or get into trigonometry or whatever, you need to learn how to do addition and subtraction multiplication first, right? Well, that's how this is actually working out. This is about shapes, forms, and composition. And it could be any other number of things you could utilize as well, such as like uh, tones or values in a material, for example, to break up a uh, symmetrical shape as well. But really what we're doing right now is we're just cutting away at it so our secondary shapes our secondary shape edits here anyways doing the boolean subtractions that's exploring positive and negative space right is going to start breaking up the symmetry that's it and so we could just start with no symmetry and just make a bunch of cubes and that's another art fundamental as part of composition right when you do something like that this is known as you guessed it this is clustering guys there's different forms of clustering but this happens to be one of them now, you'll notice that a lot of buildings are made this way so it's used a lot in architecture all right so when you do something like that that's another thing you can do potentially now of course there's this well-known little technique that artists have been using a lot of times in film and it's called kit bashing right or what they're using is little kit pieces and uh, more or less called greebles right well you can do the same thing on your objects you can add an element that's maybe a separate object entirely and just kit bash it on top but this element kind of is sitting on top of a primary shape here or primary element, right? So there's kind of a hierarchy established when you do things like that. You need to establish hierarchies, like large, medium, small, primary, secondary, tertiary shapes. In this case, our greebles would be more or less secondary shapes, okay? Because it's kind of combined with this as a whole. So that's just something to think about. You can do the whole environment this way as well. Like if you're doing like environment art, you can think of like what is your primary piece of the environment and then what are your secondary pieces, tertiary pieces, you see what I'm saying? That, that idea, you know, it's all over the place. So, you know, large, medium, small is, is a better way of looking at it sometimes. And so you can see, you start making little changes or edits here or there. Try to find a way to balance things out. And we don't want these both extruding up too high. Change the base here still. Do some more cuts into it. And there we go. So that's like the big thing here. That's like the primary way of working something like this. So a lot more interesting per se. We can see it's starting to become something, maybe like a generator or some kind of machine in a, a factory or something. That's that's the idea, anyways. So there's some other little curious oddities I think you'll find interesting though. We're gonna play with two of them real quick. And so first we have a cube, it's symmetrical. If you just rotate something 45 degrees, it, it may not be, you know, it's still symmetrical. It's not non-symmetrical, but asymmetrical. It's just rotated. So the position, rotation, and scale of things can be quite important when it comes to laying things out, right? So something to think about because it kind of presents itself and it doesn't look maybe, especially if you're looking at different kind of little angles like this, it doesn't look quite so symmetrical anymore. On the flip side of that, you can do something like a, uh, a chamfer here. It changes the symmetry plane 
because you did it that way. It's almost the equivalent of rotating it. You can see that's our symmetry planes right there. So if we were to mirror up and down or left and right, that's what we would end up having to do. Now you can't really do that the way we've made this shape, but basically we had an edge in the middle. You can use machine tools to line up on that edge. You'll see now that once we've placed the origin point there with machine tools, it adopts the rotational value of the edge, right? And the, the normal basically. So if I try to use symmetrize, I can now symmetrize across that if I wanted to, right? I can easily just say like, oh, I got to symmetrize there. Okay, so nothing too revolutionary. It's basically, what is that, a hexagon? Yeah. So that's all you got to think about on that one. But it's just the idea that, you know, it presents itself different. That's the main thing. So it's like a psychological thing that uh, is occurring there, which is maybe not exactly what you would expect sometimes when it comes to you know, playing around with such basic primitive shapes, right? Anyway, so that's pretty much it for this video. I think it's I think it's a fun little topic, and it's just something that I wanted to talk about real quick. So definitely look more into your art fundamentals and design in general. It's going to help you a lot when it comes time to uh, just make visually aesthetic pleasing things, right? There's a lot of little tricks out there for design, and you have to start start looking into them at some point if you really want to push your designs to a next level i guess and so there you have it that's it for this video guys i'll check you on the next one